Okay, um, just having a quick look around. Uh, those of you who come regularly will know Euro Aussie is one of my, it's just a pair that I've got some uh, very long term uh, positions in at the moment. So I'm always uh, uh, keen to keep an eye on it. But um, this month I've been really looking at the pound and looking at the, um, oh, just the pound pairs. In fact, I've been writing about the pound pairs on my Forex trading page over at. Um, uh, I said Amazon, uh, Facebook. It's called Learn Forex Trading, and uh, you can catch up with a little bit of analysis uh, that I do on on uh, the markets. And uh, as I said, it's I, particularly on the pound, simply because the pound's been delivering some uh, um, uh, some really nice moves. I, I opted for the pound at the beginning of the month, which you can do because currencies do have a sort of seasonality to them. Um, that's if you're not wedded to maybe a handful of pairs that you like to trade, you know, uh, consistently. There is seasonality in the market. There's also, um, you know, currencies are going to be affected by uh, political events. And I think yesterday, as I said, it was um, it was Brexit and it was the EU summit. There was very little fundamental news, and the pound's been on on huge, uh, you know, looping. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, trades to the upside and to the downside. It's um, you know it's just one of those times of Brexit being um, uh, the reason for that, right? But as I said, I'm just on the on the Euro Aussie because it's it's really really interesting both from um, lots of perspectives. First of all, we have the uh, the London Open, as we've said before, the crossover sessions are times when you have an influx of uh, uh, new traders coming in and with London you have a, a huge participation uh, suddenly you know you have this inrush of activity and, and and volume if you like volume is participation it is activity we've had the European Open sometimes you have a bit of volatility at the European Open as we can see here certainly on the 10 minute chart of uh, the Euro Aussie at seven o'clock this morning, we had this uh, this uh, dramatic fall lower. This is really a continuation on the 10 minute chart as a, a breakaway. David looks at very much looks at reversal trading opportunities. That's his, you know, that's his. His favourite, isn't it, David? Would you say that was your favourite? That is pretty much his favourite uh, approach on uh, uh, to any chart. Actually, he just looks at reversal opportunities. It has, it has, you know, has advantages. It has disadvantages in the sense of, um, you know, only from the sense of, of preference. I I like looking at congestion phases. I like breakaway trading. Uh, you, there are different, um, it's a different, you have different characteristics for breakaway as uh, from reversals. In breakaway, you have to be a, a lot more patient and um, you do get, you know, the, the argument against breakaway, as you will uh, have read and have heard from other traders, where you get an awful lot of fake out. Well, you, you would, first of all, if you don't use a methodology such as volume uh, price analysis and hopefully our indicators as well, because um, once you have an indicator such as we have here, which is the volume point of control, and this is the area of this chart where there has been what we call the most transacted volume. And it's if you want another uh, description of this area of the chart, it's where the market is in fair value. There is no, um, you know, tr uh, traders are happy to transact, you know, in around this uh, th th uh, th this point here, around this region. And you've got some. Uh, but what also happens is uh, with their indicators such as the accumulation and distribution, you then each time you know you have an attempt to break away and it and it fails, you have these areas of uh, resistance to the top. And I've pardon, I've, I've crashed as well. What? Um, I think everything's gone. Mm. Oh Lord. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, sorry. Um, talking away. David's machines decided to uh, to crash. But can you actually hear me? Hopefully you can. Or probably not. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you, thank you so much. Right, I, I, I've completely thrown for a minute because David said I've I've crashed and uh, my machine temporarily stopped for a 
nanosecond. Fantastic. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, what was I saying? Right, uh, congestion areas around the volume uh, point, of what we've developed this indicator called the volume point of control. It's where the market is what's in fair value. There is no uh, firm direction, either, you know, either one way or another. And as it moves uh, further up, you can see here the areas of resistance are are built and um, with this with the accumulation and distribution indicator that we've developed for ninja trader this line actually gets thicker now on on uh, mt4 and 5 uh, what the difference there if i just bring up the euro was the at uh, this just keep let's be consistent what happens is um the line doesn't get thicker it just you just get a thick thick line so you know it's a strong region it's just the we haven't been able to program it to to make that uh, uh, you know to increase the thickness of the line that you can see on ninja traders so we know that's a very strong region of um, uh, resistance um, then we have the volume point of control as well but actually this happened uh, overnight uh, because it's got the Aussie in the pair Aussie's always going to be uh, moving uh, it's a local currency obviously to the Asia session so we've had a really nice uh, a, a break lower then we've had the um, the a European open and we had a, a great big uh, thump down with this candle here not a lot of volume underneath it at seven o'clock but it triggered the volatility trigger uh, indicator which is these little uh, purple arrows that we have here on the uh, on the indicator sometimes they come up as little circles so we know that piece of price action on this chart is outside the average true range for this particular instrument and what tends to happen practically nine times out of ten is the price will then retrace to within the spread of the candle and this is exactly what we had and we've had a sideways uh, uh, price action we've had um, uh, then we've had London come in uh, attempt to rise again more weakness and then it looks like this is going to be going lower the trend monitor is uh, still red all the trend dots are still red now you look at that piece of, of price action you have to be aware of, of the of the session crossovers i also have a, um, a renko chart up here and i also have the version of the chart with the camarilla indicators but i just want to show you the uh, what also happens using we have another indicator here uh, what we call the tick speed because because there's no central exchange with uh, with forex what we look at and the way we uh, analyze the volume um, in this market is through tick activity and tick activity is exactly that it's 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 changes of price and the faster and the more changes of price you have then that builds up uh, uh, the volume if you like it gives us a volume readout it's um it's because there's no central exchange no you don't have a hundred percent of the information that you would have say on the futures market but it is good enough and to be honest algos use tick volume as well so tick volume is is a well respected way of being able to analyze what is actually going on in the market what vpa does it takes that information that you have uh with uh, uh, that the tick is delivering looking at the candles and candle patterns and the spread of the candle in between in particularly in the wicks also and judging whether that um, uh, information that is being displayed on your chart is genuine or not that is that is what VPA will do for you it confirms it validates what is actually happening on the chart so at eight o'clock you always have this massive inrush of volume activity participation at London it's just it, it just what happens at, at, at the London in the London session so you have to read it in the context of the London session but we and it's a great time when a lot of traders are actually trapped in uh, in uh, in bad positions because maybe they're not aware of a crossover session and what we have here at eight o'clock we have a, a, a rush up of, 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 this is what I'm saying about uh, traders not liking uh, breakaway trading because of you know fake outs as it were but you have here have an inrush of volume uh, you have the the, tr uh, the volatility uh, triggered as well you have an immediate retrace to within the spread of the candle then you have this candle here which is really interesting this candle here has more volume under than that one but what happens is it's not as wide a spread it's actually uh, narrower and it also has a wick to 
uh, the bottom, uh, to the top of the candle, which tells you there is a weakness. Then you have this candle here, which is the, uh, the down candle. Yes, you have a lot of volume uh, under that candle. You also have a lot of green under here. The, the tick speed uh, the, uh, indicator tells us, if you like, uh, it picks up the momentum and the, the, the raw uh, activity that you see. So when you have green, you know there's a lot of participation. And we know there's a lot of participation because it's London anyway. But that makes a, a two a bar reversal. It goes down, it goes back to, uh, to the volume point of control. It's still not ready to, you know, in a, any firm direction one way or another. And in fact, it's been moving sideways, a lot of volume going in there, effort to rise, very narrow spread candles, stuck at the, at the volume point of control. There's no decision one way or another whether it's going to carry on low. We have more congestion, again, volume going in all the time. And then we've now had sort of a break, a further break, break from uh, uh, the VPOC here, but what's happened is it's on a volatility candle with not a lot of volume underneath it. It's a, a big price move, but not a lot of not huge amount of volume, and we've gone into the spread of this candle. Now, how we look at that in terms of what is happening on the Renko. Now, what the Renko does, it smooths all that out away. It takes away all the noisiness that you have with, with the candles. And it tells us, so we have, this is, this is picking up the initial break. Here we have the, uh, the, uh, the pullbacks and the minor corrections that we can see here, but the trend monitor is still red. The trend dots are still red. We only have one little blue one here. We had a couple of green candles as we see here, but the trend monitor tells us this is still in a downtrend. This is the move sideways that we saw at uh, just between seven and the London Open, and now it looks like the momentum is carrying on low. But why did we have that pause at that particular point on the ch on the charts? And this is where we come to uh, our other indicator that we've developed, because when you have support and resistance levels, these key levels on the chart, you have to find a way of giving them some kind of importance, some kind of hierarchy. Now, you can use a lot of traders use Fibonacci. That's Fibonacci does a lot of stuff, but one of the ones it does, it it gives a kind of hierarchy. So when a when a price is coming, say to uh, the um, I don't know the 50%, although 50% is not a, a Fibonacci level, it's a can it's a can level. Um, it comes to, I don't know, 61.8 or, it, that you know, traders know that as an important level. And you look at the price action, it, could it reverse or, you know, could it go, uh, uh, you know, could it carry on lower? But with a Camarilla level that we do, uh, levels that we have developed on this indicator, the, the fourth level, either from uh, resistance or support, are very, very important. And now this is on the 60 minute uh, uh, chart for the Euro Aussie. And the way the levels are calculated is up to, but not including the 60 minute, they're recalculated every 24 hours. So that, you know, move lower, that, that sort of attempt to break has actually hit the S4 on the hourly chart. If we look at the 10 minute chart, we can see here, um, it's actually attempted to break from the S4. Now, what tends to happen at the fourth level is you do get a break and you almost get a retrace back to the level, a constant retest. In fact, you get them along most of uh, the levels, but particularly so on the S4. So you have to be aware if you've got the indicator and you see the break and you think, oh, great, it's gone through more often than not, it will go back and retest it. And of course, if you have with the uh, CSIs, let's have a quick look here. Let's have a look what's happening here. And I've got them here on, this is on the 10 minute, and I've taken the uh, the lines out and put them, you know, paired them up on uh, different um pains here. Here we have here, what's happening on, on the five minutes? Well, this is the, the move that we've seen uh, uh, develop on the charts that uh, is, go, is ongoing at the moment. The euro has taken a turn down. It's been driven very much by the euro. The uh, Aussie is still uh, drifting higher. Let's have a look on the 10 minute. Here we are. Uh, that's 
turning high, uh, turning lower as well. This is due possibly to have turn the Aussie because it is very overextended, but I don't want to say, well, it's got to turn. It will, but it could just turn and carry back on back up as as it can you know it can do but it's just something to be aware of but clearly the move that we're seeing not so much driven by Aussie much much more driven by the uh, by uh, this uh, uh, the selling that's coming in to the euro when you the the ideal pair if you like is you want to see an equal the, the the currents being driven equally, if you like, there's equal. You know, there's an there's a, a balance between uh, buying and selling. So you want to see strong buying and strong selling. And in fact, over on my forex uh, page at Facebook, the one that uh, came to mind yesterday was the pound Swiss, where you had this equal uh, uh, drive. So one was going high and one was going low, very very strongly. That is a really nice move. To to pick up. It doesn't mean you can't um, have a move where you have more asymmetry, where market is made perhaps, you know, as we see here, buying Aussie very, very strongly, and um, you know, the, the 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 there doesn't appear to be an equally strong sell on the on the power on the euro as we see here, or maybe you're coming to a point, you know, that could possibly turn, and that will keep going lower. Now that may carry on lower. That's when you look at your levels. That's when you look at the 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 volume as well and you may say do you know what i can see there's a strong sell coming into the euro possibly that strong selling is reflected in another euro pair so this is how you look at these uh, these indicators and how you look at the charts in terms of the candle patterns the volume you kind of put it all together to give you this very detailed three-dimensional picture of what is going on with the price action and of course you have to be aware of what the fundamental news is i don't think there's any fundamental news today and with the euro be very very conscious of what is happening on the political uh, scene uh, always always because as i've said before the euro is a deeply political currency it is driven primarily by by politics and um, the bond market and the bond market will reflect ultimately reflect whether the currency will uh, succeed or not because if the spreads the bond is the a bond market is about borrowing and the bond market can destroy a a, a, a current a, a country in the sense that if your if your borrowing costs go completely out of control how is it going to you know you're not going to survive it's that's a that's that's a fact of life so as i said the italian uh, 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 spread of the Italian yield on their bond you know how much can they you know how much of, uh, is it going to cost them to uh, to borrow in the open market and then this the, the difference the spread between what uh, is happening on the German Bund which is like a safe haven it's as good as a treasury if you like US treasury and what the attack you know that's what the market is uh, that's what the Germans have to pay because they're considered to be you know uh, prudent they have a, a vibrant economy they're very careful Careful, they're cautious, you know. So the market's willing to, uh, you know, they they don't borrowing doesn't cost them very much. Then you come down to us feckless Italians down in the south, you know, uh, how much is it going to cost you to uh, cost them to borrow? But the market, if the Italians are being backstopped and all of a sudden are being backstopped by the uh, by the ECB, backstopped by the you know the countries, uh, the frugal countries, then the markets will reward. Uh, will reward uh, uh, you know uh, the countries accordingly right what the Camarilla tells us is where this price is heading next so we've had a break from the s4 here in fact we're very close to the s uh, s4 on both the 10 and the and the 60 minute we can see here these values are recalculated every day if we have looks like we've had a, a, a nice break a little bit of buying not a huge amount of, of volume under that candle there and the next logical target is the s5 sometimes it gets there sometimes it does it doesn't you have to also use your uh, uh, support and resistance levels either if you've got MT45 or here we have um, uh, the accumulation and distribution on um, on NinjaTrader and let's have a look oh I've lost my chart what have I done with it hold on a second 
time. You do it all the time. I've lost my chance. Have I? Has, has your, uh, has your uh, thing come back? back? You're back. You're back. Okay, right. listen. Right. I'm just to keep an eye on the Euro Aussie. I'm really pleased that it's um, it's going uh, it's going down nicely for me. I've got some very long term positions on this particular pair. So it's good to see um, it uh, had turned against me slightly. But, you know, I was happy to, to hold on to them. So let's see what happens with um, the Euro Aussie today.